Next to me is an Audi e-tron GT, one of the best electric cars on sale today. This car has a starting price of well over $100,000 and it is Audi's take on the Porsche Taycan, Tesla Model S, Lucid Air and many other luxury electric sports cars or sports sedans actually. And today I'm going to tell you why it just isn't worth that price. Now this is the first time seeing my face on your screen. Don't forget to please click that subscribe button down below for more awesome videos like this one. You guys have been so, uh, you guys have been um, loving my car reviews and a lot of my Mark GTI content, a bunch of other car content I provide. Uh, so what are you doing? Subscribe is completely free and you're gonna help me achieve a dream by becoming a full-time YouTuber. Anyways, without that all that out of the way, let's talk about the e-tron GT. Now let's talk e-tron GT. Now the e-tron GT came to the United States for the 2022 model year. And as I said, it's basically a Porsche Taycan underneath the skin. It has the Porsche Taycan motors, the battery, the chassis. It's an Audi basically just took all of that and sort of kind of made their own look to it, which is, well, very traditional Audi. And I have to say, the outside of this car is probably one of the best looking Audis ever made. The outside of this car is just beautiful. I mean, every angle, no matter where you stand, where you look at it, is just freaking gorgeous. I mean, Audi's design team, A plus to you. I gotta say, A plus to you, because the outside of this car is just beautiful. It's got one of the best looking cars on sale today alongside the Porsche Taycan. I think this car is way better looking than a lot of other new Audi. The better looking than definitely better looking than the RS6, definitely better looking than the RS7, and probably arguably better looking than the R8. While this car does have lots of potential, I just don't think it's really worth the hefty price tag of over six figures. The Tron GT I'm standing next to is a prestige trim level. It is the top of the line of the base e-tron GT before you step up to the RS. Now I've driven this car, so I have I have my sort of my thoughts of my, of driving. However, I haven't driven the RS version, which obviously I haven't. But I have rode in it, and I have to say that that car is worth every penny. It's sort of what the future of Audi RS can be. But I'm sort of having a hard time finding out what the future of Audi can be from this. Let me explain. So the interior of this car is very traditional Audi. I mean, it's very, it looks exactly like a lot of their other higher end models. I would say it looks very, very identical, in fact, to maybe an A6 or an A7. But overall, this interior is very nice. The material quality is pretty Audi. And the, and no matter like where you touch, it does feel high quality. However, though, I just, can't really find why Audi sort of didn't go grand for this car. I mean, again, this is sort of what I envision is what the future of Audi looks like. And I think Audi is sort of envisioning what the future of their cars are going to look like. And I don't know. I just feel like if you're spending over six figures on a on an Audi, I feel like it should look way different and then a lot of the other models. I mean, you still have physical buttons for the air conditioning and the center console area over here, and the instrument dials and the screens and the steering wheel just sort of all look normal and traditional. When the concept of this car debuted, I absolutely loved it. I love how sort of the center console and the screens had their sort of own graphics to them, not sort of the normal, usual Audi interface. But now sort of standing, sitting in the production version, I'm sort of underwhelmed by this interior. It's sort of, sort of, kind of boring. Now, a couple of points to touch upon within this interior. First of all, the, sword, the, the door sills and the rear door sills especially, and, maybe, and, all four, and, on, and on all four doors, they have a bunch of cheap plastic, just scratchy plastic, along the doors and same thing along the door sills and on the rear as well rear door sills and rear in the rear seat area and i just sort of kind of i know that this stuff really wears well when 
the seatbelt sort of knocks against it for something, or maybe getting in and out of the car, like with, with the door sills. But I sort of expected in this sort of kind of interior that the Audi wouldn't implement more Alcantara maybe or maybe more carpet material because I just feel like that in this level of car, there should not be cheap plastic like this at all. I hope that this is, they, they sort of revise this when more Audi electric cars do come on, do come along where they will... Um, be at this price point but as of right now I sort of think that this area is and the doors it just doesn't look good I mean and when you touch it in fact it doesn't feel great either it doesn't again this isn't a base A4 this which that car is very that car is good quality for its price point but this is like a six-figure luxury sports sedan I mean there really shouldn't be this stuff in the interior another thing I do want to touch upon is the gear selector, which is this very weird looking type of thing in the center console. Obviously you pull it back for drive and up for reverse, but there is no park gear, which is very confusing for a lot of people, even my dad, who's the one that drives this car. The park gear is in fact the parking brake, where you press P up on the top. Now, that is the sort of park gear in this car. There isn't a traditional normal park gear. Now comparing it to how Audi was doing it before with a button on the gear selector, I sort of feel like this is sort of unorthodox. Like I think that this car doesn't deserve some little electric luxury uh, chicken nugget shifter thing. I think that this car sort of can, again, when this concept was revealed, it was all touch buttons, which I have no problem with. And most car companies are having it on the stock to to not clutter the center console. But I think this car sort of deserves to have a better looking one and a better usable one for most people. I think this is sort of kind of confusing. Now, one thing I do want to touch upon is range because unfortunately, it's not the best. Now for 2022, the Audi e-tron GT, one of the main reasons for having very, very low range is, well, one, the, this car uh, is really meant for sporty driving, so it's not really meant for range. Obviously because of the outside of the car, it's kind of impossible to have a car look this good achieve very good range. So we're getting at, around in the summertime, uh, when it's really warm out at 80% charge, which is what Audi recommends, we're getting around 180 miles on a charge, uh, and 100, full of 100% around 204 miles of charge. Now, in the winter, which is what we are on now, but we have a really nice 50 degree day, uh, we're getting around 150 miles with sort of the colder weather and everything, and at 100%, well, we haven't charged 200% yet, so can't quote that yet. However, I suspect it will probably be around 180, 190 miles. Now, the reason why I do want to touch upon on range, because range is sort of kind of important when having an electric car. Obviously, since this car isn't a Tesla, you have to sort of adapt to other electric car charger brands, EVgo, ChargePoint, Electrify America. And as much as we want to take this car further than our state, it's, it's unfortunately impossible with one, the range, and two, the chargers. A lot of the chargers along uh, the states, unfortunately, are not operatable, which is kind of unfortunate for people who have non-Teslas. Now, when Tesla opens up their supercharging network to a bunch of people that don't have Teslas, then, they, then that will obviously change. However, as of right now, it's kind of impossible to have a non-Tesla uh, unless you're just driving it within your state, which is what we use this car for. It's not intended to leave this area uh, where we live in. Now, there are a couple of other things I do want to touch upon is about the outside of this car. There are some unnecessary parts that I would like to see changed, like definitely like on the concept. On the, concept of, on the concept of this car, this rear diffuser, I don't think was there. I could be wrong, but nonetheless, this rear diffuser down here is kind of useless. Um, I agree, it looks very cool, but electric cars don't need diffusers, so I would just have that completely blank so this car can achieve really 
could probably achieve better range. Another thing I would absolutely change is this line on the side of the car. And I don't know if the camera can really see it, but I would just have that smooth so the air can sort of flow over a lot better. Now, another reason in the winter, if you do have an e-tron JT or an e-tron, is that this car doesn't have a heat pump for 23 the e-tron gt gets a heat pump and gets a price increase so that is another reason that this car sort of kind of you know doesn't really compete against on range against its competitors but i would say if you are buying one of these you either love audi or absolutely love the look of it now i do want to talk about driving experience on this car now this base version quote unquote of the e-tron gt is kind of underwhelming honestly i rode in the rs e-tron gt and i thought that that car was fantastic that car really shows what the future of the rs audi will look like as an electric car but for this i would say it's more turned to luxury more than driving experience this car did not draw as drive obviously as fast for having well this car does have 522 horsepower so I would expect this car to well drive very nicely very very quickly and yes it, the ride is very smooth it handles really nicely but it doesn't have that aspect of sportiness that I was expecting having riding in a Porsche Taycan before I can sort of sort of feel that sportiness coming from that car being a Porsche However, with this car, I just can't find it. I don't know, I, I have it in dynamic mode, it's, and it's really, really nice. However, I just can't seem to find the sportiness that this car has. So, maybe I need to take it on a longer drive. Maybe I sort of need to drive it a little bit longer than just 10 minutes. But, overall, I would say that, you know, for being a sort of sport, luxury car that looks really good this car drives very nicely however if you're looking for that sportiness the rs i would say is the way to go which maybe this is the way that audi intended it to be but that's just my thoughts on the way this car drives and if you do drive this car uh fast like the range goes by quickly um having riding riding in this thing when it's fully accelerating i would say that this car eats through its range which is in the cold weather is crazy which obviously electric car miles i would say five electric car miles in this car represents one mile uh in real life so thought i would share that but yeah that's the driving experience of the e-tron gt and so those are my thoughts on the e-tron gt this car definitely has lots of potential for the future of Audi and the future of Audi's electric cars. I definitely think that Audi, the future of Audi's electric cars, they are going to look very good. The interior is going to sort of be Audi, but the but that's sort of all I can really take away from this car. I still feel like that this car does need some finding out. For example, the interior, I think, should be a little bit more grand. I think that, that the interior should be grand for being in, well, the e-tron GT. I think the outside of this car could be cleaned up a little bit, get rid of the fake diffuser, get rid of all the fake, you know, fake angles that really look nice but aren't really needed. And then finally, the range of this car. If Audi can improve this range to make it be 300 miles, I could absolutely recommend it to everybody. But because of those reasons, I can't really sort of recommend this if you're looking for range. If you're looking for a very good looking electric car, absolutely one of the contenders. However, I really think that if you're, if you're really looking just for a luxury sport sedan, if you're looking for sporty driving and everything like that, the Taycan may be better for you in that case. However, as this car does have potential, I'm looking forward to seeing what the future of Audi is going to look like, and I hopeful and I'm hoping I'm hoping that this car will sort of inspire a lot of other Audis in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you did, smash that like button. Comment down below what other videos you guys want to see with my Marquee GTI or any other Audi or Porsche content. Um, I can provide that for you guys. And I and uh, yeah, and I'll see you guys in the next one 